Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Sabanye Stillwater stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Sabanye Stillwater mines platinum, palladium, and gold with operations in South Africa, Canada, Argentina, and the US. The company produces 13% platinum, 23% gold, 37% palladium, and 24% rhodium. Half of the world's demand for gold is used in jewelry, 37% electronics. Also, it's used in coins, investing, and other stuff. Half of platinum is used to make the catalytic converters, which are used in gas-powered cars. Jewelry is one quarter of the use of platinum. The rest is chemicals, glass, electrical, petroleum, and other stuff. Over 80% of palladium and rhodium are used in cars. The nice thing about investing in a company like this is if one commodity crashes in price, it can focus on other commodities. Smaller miners may not have this luxury if they only mine one metal. Just to give you a little background on the types of mining companies, there are two levels of mining companies. The first is the junior miner or exploration company. It raises money from investors or other mining companies to look for gold, platinum, etc. It is much riskier investing in a junior miner because they may never discover anything to mine, which happens more often than not. The flip side is, when they are successful, the stock blows up and you can make 10, 20, or 30 extra money. If the stock is a dollar or lower, then it's probably a junior miner. This company is the second level of miner, which is the major mining company. These companies have lots of experience, are well capitalized, and are actively mining different commodities, and selling them probably around the world. Valuing a major miner is not easy, but it is doable. You need to look at the mines it has and the amount of product it can pull from those mines and gauge the future price of those commodities. When you invest in a commodity-linked company like a miner, the company is at the mercy of the spot price of the underlying commodity. You can do all the analysis in the world, but if you're investing in a copper mining company and the price of copper drops 70%, that company's stock will tank. Demand for metals is expected to grow at a very fast rate in the next several years, mainly due to the large amount of battery electric vehicles that need to be built. Gold Fields Limited is one of the world's largest gold miners. Its subsidiary was GFI Mining. In 2012, it spun off that subsidiary and renamed it Sabanye. That's the company we're looking at. Each shareholder of Gold Fields received one share of Sabanye stock. The company is headquartered in South Africa and was founded in 2012. It started trading in 2013 and can be found on the New York Stock Exchange, Mexican Bolsa, Deutsche Börse, Börse Stuttgart, Johannesburg, and London Stock Exchange. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 9.5 billion market cap. They're trading at 13.23 a share and they have 720 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And their free cash flows have grown a lot from 348 million over 1 billion. It was 1.2 billion in 2020. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that was negative in 2018, way up to over $3 billion in the trailing 12 months. Revenue is a sales for the company, and their revenue more than triples from $3.4 billion to over $11 billion. It's just amazing growth. This is the company's income statement. All their numbers are in South African Rand. I converted the numbers to US dollars on my Excel spreadsheet. But one Rand equals .068 US dollars, or around $0.07. Cents. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Two-thirds of their revenue is generated in South Africa, one-third in the United States. The revenue from Argentina and Canada are bundled up in part of the United States number. Here is a breakdown of their 2020 revenue. I pulled this directly from their annual report and I just put it into an Excel file so it was easy to see. Palladium was 47 billion revenue, which is 37%. Next is rhodium, 24%, gold, 23%, and platinum, 13%. Below revenue is the cost of revenue, cost of labor is a big cost of revenue, and the cost to break the rock and the cost to process it to turn it into a metal. That's all part of cost of revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit, and that grew a ton from $2.3 billion up to $65 billion. Below that is operating expenses. Depreciation is a big operating expense for them. SG&A is marketing and payroll. And their operating income grew from $1 billion up to $62 billion. 
they paid 1.9 billion of interest on their debt and the bottom line of the income statement is their net income which was negative in 2018 way up to 45 billion in the trailing 12 months the company said the reason they're doing so well is higher demand and higher commodity prices this is the company's statement of cash flows the top line is operating cash flow that's how much cash the company generates from its operational business you could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. They generated a lot more cash flow in 2020 than they did in 2018 and 2019 combined. And the reason they're growing so much is because they're spending so much in CapEx. The cost to acquire the rights to a mine, that all goes into CapEx. So they spend between $7 billion and $11 billion in CapEx each year. But even after investing so much into their business, they still have a lot of free cash flow left over. And they pay a really nice dividend. And they started buying back stock. They bought back $826 million in the trailing 12 months. And the company mentioned it plans to buy back a lot more. When a company buys back stock, it decreases the shares outstanding, making your shares more valuable. The two main ways to reward shareholders are to buy back stock or pay a dividend. Each year, they repay more debt than they issue, so they're decreasing their debt load. They did issue $1.7 billion of stock in 2019. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They have $68 billion of equity. They raised $30 billion from selling stock, and they profited $13 billion from running their business. They have other reserves of $26 billion, but I couldn't find in the annual report what this number represented. Let's look at the capital structure. $5.5 billion of equity, $1.2 billion of debt. They are 82% equity, 18% debt. And their net debt is negative, so they could pay down all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have nearly $600 million of cash left over. Their weighted average cost of capital is a little on the higher side at 10.33%. When a company is not based in the United States, they usually have a country risk premium added onto the WAC. And certain countries have a higher risk premium added. If they were in Germany, the UK, Canada, the country risk premium is pretty low. But South Africa, it's moderate, the country risk premium. The higher the WAC, the lower the valuation will be. The WAC is a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's $13.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a calculated stock price of $12.4 billion. We divide that by 720 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $17.24. They're trading at $13.23, so they're trading at a 23% discount. It's a buy according to the model. According to Simply Wall Street, the average analyst projects their revenue to decrease 4.5%. I decreased their revenue 4.5% for the next four years. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. To calculate the future free cash flow estimates, I needed to figure out what percent of their revenue they convert to free cash flow. To figure that out, I summed up these four free cash flow numbers divided by these four revenue numbers, and that's about 10%. So I converted about 10% of their revenue to free cash flow. That's how I got the future free cash flow numbers. And I'm coming out with a stock price higher than a trading at. If this was a US based company, I think the stock would be trading at $50 a share. A lot of investors are concerned about investing in companies that are based in certain countries due to the geopolitical risk. Simply Wall Street is even higher than me. They're at $24 a share. They're saying it's 46% undervalued. Two analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $25. This is where the stock has been trading since it IPO'd. So it's really a roller coaster ride, up and down, up and down. This seems like a really stressful stock to own due to all the price movements. This is where the stock has been trading the last six months. So it was over $20 a few months back, and it's come down a lot since then. If you were able to blend together all the commodity prices based on the percent of this company's revenue, I bet it would look fairly close to their stock price movements. Their beta is 1.45, so the stock moves about one and a half times the market. It's up 16% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 is up 35%. The 52-week low is $10, the high is 21, and the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. 5 million shares have been traded the past 10 days for the stock. Of the 720 million shares outstanding, 685 million are on float. Only 10% are held by institutions, and 1% of the shares are shorted. In the past year, the stock hasn't done that well. Same thing in the past five years. But the stock bottomed out three years ago in 2018. It fell between 2 and $3. So that's why it's up nearly 500%. If you bought it in 2018, you would have made an amazing return. But if you bought it at a different time, you may not have made such a great return. 
Analysts are projecting their earnings and revenue to decrease. I guess they're so high now, they feel they can't go higher. Their earnings are up 75% on average the past five years. In the past year, it's up 361%. You think based on these numbers, a stock would be going through the roof, but it's not. If you put $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you would have been up and down a few times, but if you're still holding, you'd be at $28,000 today, which is a pretty good return. That's an annual return of 13%. The biggest shareholders, Gold One South Africa, 5.3%, then BlackRock, Allen Gray, 91, and Fidelity. Let's look at their financial ratios. Their PE is unbelievable. I haven't seen a PE this good in a long time. 3.1. 15 is considered a good PE, and they're way below 15, so investors are paying $3 for $1 of earnings. They also have a really good price of sales that's below 1, so that means they're bringing in more revenue than their market cap. And their price to book is also really good at 1.7. And they don't have many intangible assets on their balance sheet. It's mostly tangible book value. A really high return on invested capital of 68%. They can cover their interest payments 33 times. An amazing ROE at 55%. They have a high current ratio and quick ratio. They have lots of cash on their balance sheet and they're well capitalized. In the trailing 12 months, they generated over 1 billion of free cash flow. They have 2.8 billion working capital and they only pay 556 million in dividend payments. So they have $3.2 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 15 companies in the same industry as SBSW. And if they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. Their numbers are better in pretty much every single category, except market cap. Their market cap is lower, which indicates the stock is really undervalued. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 23% discount. But this company is doing an amazing job at growing their business. I just don't get why the stock isn't going up. Let me know in the comments if you know why the stock isn't going up faster. This seems like a great bargain. Metals are so important now because a lot of the material is used in battery electric vehicles. And most countries are pushing for more battery electric vehicles and less combustion engines. And possibly in 10 years from now, it will be only battery electric vehicles that are being sold. So it makes this company even more valuable. I rank their free cash flow 7 out of 10, their revenue 10 out of 10, and their ratios 10 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.